All right. Uh, our next person up is Mr. Daniel Sonnenberg. Daniel is a composer who lives in Portland. He's an associate professor of music at USM. He's best known for his opera, The Summer King, which I'm hoping many of you got to see when it premiered in 2014 in Portland at Portland Ovations. And that is about Negro League baseball legend Josh Gibson. The opera, which was um, also received funding from the Arts Commission, was premiered in concert format between Portland Ovations and the University of Southern Maine at Portland's Merrill Auditorium with the support of the National Endowment for the Arts Grant as well as help from the Arts Commission. It will receive a stage world premiere by Pittsburgh Opera in 2017. Very exciting. So please help me welcome Dan. I realize a lot of my um, presentation is in my class, so I'll um, pretend you didn't hear all that. Um, so uh, I've, I'm a lifelong baseball fan. From the time I was a kid, I was captivated by the story of the Negro Leagues, particularly the story of Josh Gibson, one of the greatest hitters to ever play the game, um, and one who was denied the opportunity to play in Major League Baseball because of the color of his skin. Um, I wrote an opera about him. Uh, that's Sisyphus put, pushing Boulder up the mountain. That was Linda's idea, but it sort of really resonated with me because for so much of this process, um, I was alone in a room uh, with nobody waiting for this opera um, and no real idea if I'd ever get it done. That's my um, studio on Peaks Island late in the process, uh, but it's a good representative of, um, representation of what my mind sort of felt like. Um, and then um, in 2013, Portland Ovations, um, to the surprise of everybody, but most especially me, um, announced that they were going to produce the uh, world premiere in a concert format, um, as you heard, of the opera, um, which meant that suddenly this very impractical piece um, that just existed in my imagination was going to see the light of day, and, and this meant a lot of practical concerns had to be taken care of, like the preparation of parts and, and scores, and Luckily at USM, I, I'm surrounded by a, a team of talented uh, students who I put to work, helping me with proofreading, and I spread that inner turmoil, 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 uh, turmoil which you can see in action there. Um, I love this photo because uh, you can see the sleep deprivation uh, in all of our eyes. Um, there were some late nights. Um, and uh, it also meant that um, I was actually going to be working with singers um, and hearing my words um, sung by someone other than me caterwauling in my tiny little cramped uh, studio. Um, so the process was really uh, exciting and, and, and riveting for me. Um, the world premiere back in uh, 2014 at Merrill, um, and I didn't specifically choose this photo because Julie's sneak, sneaking in there. She was singing with the choir, um, but it was really one of the most uh, amazing nights of my life. Um, and uh, it was this moment where I, I felt like I went from the guy, the crazy guy who's been talking about that same opera for however many years, uh, to somebody who had accomplished something. Um, and it, my, my family were there, my friends, my colleagues at USM. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, the immediate critical response to the next day, Christopher Hyde had a review uh, in Portland Press Herald. The headline you know, was exactly what I was hoping to, to see, and it, it made me feel great. Um, but all of a sudden, this, product, uh, this project that had been in my head for so long and exclusively mine, was suddenly out there for people to comment on. Um, one of the first comments I got from um, this guy, who is Sean Gibson, Josh Gibson's great grandson, who was at the Portland performance, he said, you know, you did a really great thing here, but I don't know that the audience really goes away knowing that much about Josh Gibson. Um, and this was kind of like a thunderclap for me. I said, gee, that was sort of the point of the opera. Um, the, uh, the next, People I heard that from were the people at Pittsburgh Opera who were also in attendance, the general director, and they flew me out and they said, we are interested in, in producing a world premiere. 
but we have concerns um, about the, the story, um, and again, particularly, your main character doesn't emerge um, as a sympathetic figure. Uh, the audience doesn't really fall in love with him, and we need you to consider um, bringing him to life more and making some changes, and also, you know, bringing the other central characters into, into greater focus. Um, this is Josh and Grace, who is the, uh, the female uh, protagonist, his lover uh, in the opera. And, uh, you know, people didn't understand her motivation or, or who she was. Um, another character who's central to my story um, was Wendell Smith, uh, a newspaper reporter for the Pittsburgh Courier. All of these people were very clear in my mind. I knew exactly who they were, why they mattered to Josh, why they were so important, what the emotional thrust was. But somehow, I hadn't quite done the job. I got enough feedback to understand that that, that, that wasn't um, clear in the opera. So um, this is a, a small image, but I couldn't resist it. It says, um, it gets easier the second time. <laughs> and um, I relate to the photo, too, because seven years ago, I was pushing a triplet stroller, um, similar to that. Um, and I, I realized, you know, it meant diving back in. And with a, uh, a new co-librettist, Mark Campbell, and a, a dramaturg, I had to write a lot of new music. I had to give these characters something to say, new songs, uh, new arias for Josh, uh, two new arias for Josh, a new aria for Wendell Smith, a new aria for Grace. Uh, it was exciting and it came at a cost because um, Pittsburgh said, we want your opera to be two hours long. And it was already two hours and 10 minutes. So I had to cut um, a lot of my favorite music, which was a realization um, that was very painful, and I, I had to come to understand that um, the strength of the story was far more important um, than the strength of, of any one individual musical detail. Um, and the idea was to tell his story and to turn him into a man and somebody who the audience really could, could feel like they know. And I'm deep in the process right now. I submitted the Act One orchestral score yesterday, um, and I'm, they think they're getting the Act Two score November 1st, and it's going to be in Pittsburgh in April um, with uh, internationally renowned singer Denise Graves. So it's it's very very exciting, and uh, you know, pray for me. <laughs>